I am Roy Chirian, co-founder and CEO of Market Diligent, an analytics services provider. If you want to trace my journey as to how I landed up in Market Diligent, I was born in a large family in Trivandrum. My father was had a plantation, we were a happy-go-lucky family and we had a lot of fun. And in the process of having fun, I also did my engineering and followed it up with an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. And then I was thrown into the big bad world of corporate, uh, the corporate world. And in the big bad city of Delhi. That is a different kind of fun and I had a lot of good experiences, lots of highs, mostly highs and some lows through my journey. As far as work is concerned, I spent most of my life in marketing and the last stint at Nestle where I was looking after the chocolates and confectionery business. It was a great experience for me to work in fabulous companies like Nestle, advertising agency like FCB and consulting firm like Feedback. After all these experiences, somehow there was a bug in me all this while of starting something of my own. In fact, I wanted to start a business immediately after my MBA, a tourism business in Kerala. Somehow, the environment at that point of time was not supportive, or so at least most of my relatives, friends, everyone thought that it will be a waste if you start a business at that point of time. Looking back, maybe that was a bad decision. If I had started a tourism business at that point of time, I would have been very, very well established by now. Anyway, I continued my corporate journey. The entrepreneur bug keep coming back. In 2000, the bug bit me again when there was the dot-com boom. One of my friends had made it really big in the dot-com. I got selected by uh, the McKinsey Venture Competition was one of the three to be identified for venture funding. Then I chickened out because I had just landed my dream job with Nestle. Anyway, I continued with Nestle and after spending about seven years, the entrepreneurial bug bit me again. Uh, I started Market Intelligent along with a partner, Arunay Gupta. And this time it worked because the opportunity was good the environment, the Indian environment was good. There was much more respect as far as entrepreneurship was concerned. And I was much more confident of making it a success. Why was I confident of making this a success? Because when I looked at the analytics environment or the business proposition of analytics, what we were trying to do was making sense of the data which a lot of customers have. Even going back to my days in Nestle and in FCB, sometimes we struggled with data trying to get meaning out of that. I did a lot of crude modeling, what you say. Uh, when I look back, it's crude modeling, but I thought there was a lot of opportunity there. And when I thought about it, I thought there was serious opportunity in converting data into information. So there was a great opportunity as far as analytics is concerned and India offers the best environment for that because we have great talent we are naturally inclined as far as mathematics analytics we have that bent of time, mind and the Indian education system though some people might have a negative view about it in my view is churning out good talent for this business. We get people with sound mathematical background who are capable of churning numbers, making sense out of that for the businesses. From Nestle, I moved on to UB for a very short stint uh, in Bangalore. That's where this idea of analytics came up. And the first thing I did is to ring up a friend of mine in the US who was heading market research and consumer insights for Wrigley's. He said, hey Roycey, that's how my friends call me. Great idea, I was thinking about the same thing. You know what, there's another friend of mine who's also wanting to do the same thing. And he works in Citibank. So this friend of mine in the US introduced me to his friend who eventually became my partner. His name is Anane Gupta. Both of us came with 
complementary skill set. Anune was a hardcore banker, hardcore analytics person, and I was a hardcore FMCG guy and a business person. So I thought that the combination was good and we started off. That was in late 2007. We spoke to a lot of friends, uh, my bosses, business partners, everyone thought it's a great idea. The next thing they asked was like, how much money can I put in? So it was quite easy for me to raise funds for the startup. From 10 onwards, the growth has been fairly good. The environment changed and we were long enough in the business and things are looking up. Uh, in 2012, early 2012, we set up a sales team in the US because we had we had generated some money, we had some cash reserve, so we thought okay anyway, let's invest in a sales team in the US. In fact, going back, that's one mistake which I made when we started the business. When we had the funds, we were a little worried about the environment. We didn't invest in sales at that point of time. We didn't want to repeat the mistake. We invested in the sales team. We got other people, advisors to come in, which is all coming together and the business is on, on an upswing now. So right now, we are about 45 people strong, growing very fast, and probably by the end of next year, we will be at least 100 people. That's the target which we are chasing, and uh, further growth to come in the future years. We are focusing on the consumer goods and the banking space as far as analytics is concerned. Going forward, we want to consolidate on these two spaces, and also, we want to add other sunrise sectors like for example we have identified that energies and utilities is a big sector untapped as far as analytics is concerned so we have got on board someone in the US who has been in the energy sector for the last 15 years to build this business so we are looking at strong pillars where we can grow, we can build separate verticals. So as we grow, go forward, the scale up becomes easier. So that is as far as sectors is concerned, which is consumer goods, there is banking, there is energy. Uh, next year, we, we don't plan to add anything more. These are the three. Going forward, we will identify new sectors to be added. Now, as far as focus, geographic focus is concerned, uh, we are consolidating in the US. We are adding more people in the US to do sales and the rest of the world what we are looking at is we are developing partnership. For example, we have developed a partnership in the East Asia with a large company in Malaysia and in Indonesia. We have forced a partnership with a large company in, in the Middle East. So that's a plan we have right now. Once we are large enough probably we might make a joint venture in these places so that the focus as far as the direct focus is concerned it's going to be the US and the business in the other parts will be driven by these partner companies. Opportunity for analytics is really really massive. If you go by a McKinsey study the study estimates there will be a shortage of close to 200,000 analytics people in the US by 2015. Okay, so that's a massive size. Okay, that's as big as the size of, uh, say, uh, Infosys. Okay, that's the that's just from the US. Okay, and that's only the kind of analytics which we are talking about. But if you really look at the data which is being generated from other sectors, like for example, this is what I'm talking about, the traditional sector. But if you look at sectors like mining, gas fields, the kind of data that is being generated from there is huge. And the same techniques of analytics which we are using for the consumer goods industry or banks or anything like that can be applied to these industries also. So once those things open up, the opportunity is going to get bigger. So it, 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 it could be as big as the software industry going forward. Entrepreneurial environment in India, in India is rapidly changing for the better. Okay? 
if you look at say 15 or 20 years back to start a company was not very easy for us starting a company didn't take any time at all probably it's because of the industry which we are in it's a services industry we didn't have to set up a plant or anything like that uh, but even then I would say it's fairly easy we were incubated by IM Bangalore so there are lots of IIT Delhi has an incubation center, I believe IIT Kanpur has, IIM Ahmedabad has. A lot of incubation centers are available as far as people to start. The second is even the regulatory processes to start businesses is much easier. And the third and the most important thing, if you start a business, it's no longer looked down upon. Okay, it's, it's, uh, in, in some sense it's cool to be an entrepreneur these days. So you'll find a lot of guys from coming out of the management institutes and uh, engineering colleges starting a business of their own uh, before even they start working, which is considered cool. Sometimes they have fa fantastic ideas. I know of a company uh, which was started in the college, uh, my engineering college. Uh, by some youngsters while they were in the college itself, raised a million dollars while they were studying. So those kind of environment exist today. The other thing as well as the entrepreneurial environment is the emergence of VCs. Okay, You don't, people when you start a business there is a reluctance as well as taking loans are concerned. Okay look you have to pay it back. But if you take, if there are VCs to fund it or angels to fund it, you have to give up equity. Probably in the long run, that will be more expensive than taking loans. But when you start up, a lot of people are worried about putting money from their pocket or having to pay back loans. That barrier is gone. So altogether, from a regulatory perspective, from a funding perspective, from being recognized perspective, Entrepreneurship, fantastic environment. And India is relevant from every perspective now. Okay, it might not be one of the largest economies in the world, but when you look at most of the global corporations, most of the developed markets have reached saturation. For them to get growth, they have to look at countries like India, China, or the big countries, you would say, or the developing markets. Uh, in India, if I say that, okay, look, we are growing at 10%, it's no great deal. But if you look, go to the West and say that we are growing at 10%, they'll say, wow. So that's the kind of growth that is happening. Though India, in the overall scheme of things, this 20% growth in India might be contributing to very, very little on a global scale. But in a few years' time, once India becomes a certain scale, suddenly the growth in India will start adding significantly to the overall growth of the companies at a global level. Mm -hmm.